Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video we're going to go ahead and cover how to sell covered calls on the Merrill Edge platform. We have been getting asked quite a bit here on the platform as far as Merrill Edge goes. That seems to be one of the more popular grouping of videos and a lot of investors have been asking how do you sell covered calls and write them up here on the Merrill Edge platform because it is a little bit different than say Robinhood. And I have noticed that a lot of investors are beginning to migrate from Robinhood, Webull, M1 Finance over to the more traditional platforms once again. So we're gonna go ahead and cover that in today's video. If you are brand new here to the channel, have not yet subscribed, go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it gray, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue if you find it helpful, entertaining and you know all that fun jazz now let's go ahead and get into the video of course you know here on the channel we cover making money saving money and investing money we've recently been working on our blog here our website investingonthego.com i have about 19 articles out there and it hasn't been a huge focus of mine but recently i wanted to go ahead and transition into building it out to have different articles going over how to make money through online savings accounts, how to save money, you know, budgeting, tips for budgeting, investing through the stock market, through real estate, investing in yourself or in crypto. So we're gonna be releasing a bunch of new articles, kind of going over, you know, a brain dump and putting that out, out there in order to help you guys make money, save money and invest money. So if you have any comments or suggestions on any specific articles or discussions, let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, I'm not any sort of any financial advisor. I am just an individual here for making videos for fun and entertainment. And let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, if you guys are signed up for Merrill Wedge, this is gonna look pretty familiar here to you. Once you log into your account, you're gonna be within your account holdings. So this isn't any different. When you are logged on to the Merrill Edge platform, we're gonna be focusing on the taxable accounts here. So I kind of just removed all the other accounts and we're only gonna be focusing on the taxable one because what we want to have when we are writing covered calls is we want to have one company. In this example, we are using VTI. And number two, we wanna have at least 100 shares of this company in order to begin writing some covered calls. Once we have a company and we have 100 shares, we can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is dropping over and getting into the option chain. So in order to do this here on the Merrill Edge platform, you're gonna go ahead and type VTI or whatever your company is that you are looking to do some options with up top and go ahead and select it to get the quote. Here in the top right or the top area here, we're gonna go ahead and then select research. One of the things that I really like about Merrill Edge is that you can do a quick deep dive into any company or any fund by going into that specific fund's story or that company's story. It does a breakdown of the background of the company, goes over the history, who their competitors are, who runs the business, how long they've been in the business, uh, you know, comparison between the fund or the business in comparison to the S&P 500 and other businesses within their sector. So it does a really good breakdown, kind of giving you a very quick five, 10 minute story really fast. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, here, we're going to go ahead and select research because we're looking to research more on this ETF. Now we have quite a few options up at the top, overview, charts, performance, holding, technical analysis. In this case, we're looking to do some options. So we're gonna go ahead and select option chain. Now, one thing I wanna go ahead and make is I started to make this, put this together back in June of 2021. So it has been roughly two months since we've kind of put this together. So uh, one thing here I wanna go ahead and quickly showcase that we this date here, when I did these screenshots is on the 14th of June, 2021. And that is four days until this expires. So here, this is on the 14th. Say that this recording is on the 14th of June. These options expire on the 18th. That's only four days until expiration. So there's a bit of a decay on what you'll get for the premium when you are writing covered calls this late into you know when they are set to expire. So, okay, just wanna quickly note that out before moving on. Now here, the last price that this company was trading at is $220.52. So two months ago, that is where VTI was trading at. Now here on the left-hand side, we have calls. 
Now, we have calls that are in the money because currently it is priced at 220.52. So in the money calls, we have one at 220 at 215. Now these are both below the current share price, so they're in the money calls. We have these ones here that are not bolded out that are 225 and 230 and these are called out of the money calls. So in our case, we bought these shares. Say for example, I think my example that I wrote in here was at 218.50. We're gonna go ahead and cover three examples of what happens at the expiration of these options here towards the end. Uh, so what generally what I like to do is write out of the money calls. That way, say my initial buy price is at $218.50. I've already made some capital gains up until 220, but if I focus on writing a covered call at 225, that'll be five additional dollars on top of my $2 that I've made already per, per share here. And we can see here that the last price on the premium was at 10 cents, and that is by 100 shares. So it's 10 cents times 100, so it'd be $10. Uh, so quickly, just kind of going over that. now. Uh, we're going to be focusing here at 225 so that's a five dollar difference here so when i look at the out of the money calls what i want to focus on is how much of a gain would i need or the share price need from its current price of 220.52 in order to reach that strike price of 225 and in this case i just use a percentage change calculator so 220.52 to the uh, to the strike price of 225 that is a difference of roughly 2.03 percent so the price would need to increase by roughly 2.03 percent over that four day period here four days until expiration for those covered calls to be in the money so in this case i felt you know in four days i don't believe that the share price especially vti it was kind of rocky at that time back two months ago so I don't think the market would move 2%. So I felt pretty confident writing those covered calls. So this is another website here that I use. It's called optionprofitcalculator.com. And you can go into the covered call calculator. So in this example, we went ahead and put VTI. The current price is 220.52. Our purchase price of these shares, I went ahead and put 220.21 because that is my actual purchase price. But the examples towards the end of this video are at 218.50 I believe so anyways number of shares that we had purchased was a hundred so our total cost was twenty two thousand and twenty one dollars there for a hundred shares at that purchase price of 220.21 so this is just kind of providing you know what is the company that we're writing covered calls on what's our cost basis and what's our total cost so far now our option that we're actually doing here, we are writing an option. We're focusing on the 18th of June and our strike price was at 225. How much are we getting paid for writing the option? It is 10 cents. We're making 10 cents and that is available right there. That is the last price that an individual out there was able to sell these covered calls at so 10 cents is what we're going to be using here so we kind of punch that in we're selling one contract each contract is a hundred shares of that underlining company or fund so we're just selling one and our total cost is going to be ten dollars so here it kind of just goes over the current stock price range you can punch it in manually but generally you know in this case 238 vti hasn't been to 238 yet and it has been at 205 but it just automatically puts in this range in there you can go ahead and put the range in yourself but i usually just leave it as default now the estimated returns down here so vti is currently priced at 220.52 on the 14th of june at 2021 it's going to get ten dollars net credit paid to us when we're selling this call our maximum risk is twenty two thousand ten dollars and ninety cents that is because initially we bought our 100 shares for 22,021 by writing this covered call we're going to be paid a premium of $10 that lowers our cost basis by $10 there put in our maximum investment risk for those 100 shares total at $22,010.90 so our maximum return if our current shares are held up until 225 
we will make $489 at the price of expiration at 225. So if these covered calls went all the way up to 225 and over, based on the number of shares that we own of this company and where our cost basis was at at 2021, we would have a maximum return of 489. Anything over that uh, you know, we, we'd have to sell our shares at 225. So that's just the maximum return that we can make while writing these covered calls at 225. Our break even, that doesn't really matter too much. You know, 220, uh, 220, 11, that's sort of where we're reducing our cost basis now because we, uh, we did, um, based off our 100 shares, we are collecting 10 cents. So we're kind of lowering our cost basis by writing these covered calls so this has a probability of profit is at 66.6 percent .6%. so the chance that this is going to make us profitable is pretty high but in my case when i was looking at this i do not believe that vti is going to be moving two percent within those four days so probability here i mean it may seem high two percent isn't that hard of a swing for you know, VTI or the S&P 500 or, you know, anything currently in this market, there can be swings of anywhere from one to 2% on a daily basis or even 2% on a daily basis. So it can happen, but uh, that's kind of just a quick breakdown here. Now, in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and verify that we're looking at 225. We're going to go ahead and click on the call itself for 225. Once you've done this, it's gonna go ahead and bring it up, verify that you are buying the correct dated one. So this is VTI, June 18th at 225. We're gonna go ahead and select trade. Now here, we're gonna go ahead and sell to open. So they have a couple options here, buying to open, sell to open, buy to close and sell to close. Generally, what you're wanting to do is sell because you're wanting to collect that premium. So in this case, we are selling to open. We're selling one quality, which is a bundle of 100 shares. Our expiration date is the 18th of June, 2021. Our strike price is 225. A lot of this will manually get put in for you if you're clicking on that 225 option. Here, the last price that someone else had sold this was at 10 cents. And we can see here that the bid is anywhere from 5 cents to 10 cents. The day's range has been 5 cents to 10 cents. So we're pretty confident that we can probably sell this option for 10 cents. So here we go ahead and do an order type of a limit. We put in the price there of 10 cents and we're setting it to a duration of a day. This can also be set to, I think it's almost indefinitely. I think it's 90 days, but it tells you something else. I forgot what the option is here. And then our maximum gain by selling this option is $10, meaning that you know, initially, once we sell this option and someone decides to buy it, we're going to go ahead and immediately get a premium of $10. So there's going to be a button down here to submit. You're going to go ahead and submit, and it's going to go ahead and do a quick breakdown of what you're currently doing. You know, we currently have it priced at $220.53 now. The strike price is $225. We're writing a call. The limit has been set at $0.10. Cents per 100 shares, so it's $10. So when we do submit this order, there is a bit of a fee here of SEC fee of one cent and a commission there of 65 cents. So our total premium paid to us will be $9.34. And this is almost immediately after you have executed the selling. Once you've sold the option, you'll automatically get that $9.34 as cash into your account. So what are the three options that happen here? Once we've submitted and we've executed, now we have four days until expiration. So here I went ahead and put the next day. So here the share price, the price goes down. So option number one that, that may happen is that the share price may not hit 225. You know, it may actually cross over 225 between those three days. So here, say that you put in, there's four days until expiration. Uh, this is the second day and you're kind of watching it. The second day, it's at 218.50 cents. It bumps up on the third day to be over 225. But on the actual date of expiration, before it closes, it closes down back once again at 218.50. So in this case, if the price doesn't fall above the strike price, 
your options here is that you're going to be keeping your premium so you're going to be collecting and keeping your ten dollars you're also going to be keeping your hundred shares of the company that you sold those covered calls on you're going to also be available to average down on your position because now it is below your cost basis if this is a company that you're investing in for the long term and it is now below your cost basis this could be a really good time to average down on your position if you can buy another 100 shares to write some more covered calls then you can do that option as well but in this case i put that there as availability because in most cases if we do buy and hold a company it's more than likely it's not just going to be because we wanted to sell options on it it's going to be a long-term investment where we're looking to make profit and if we can get our keep our premium there while keeping our shares and being able to average down that's a pretty good deal and then after expiration what can you do you can resell those options once again so you keep your shares you can go ahead and keep your premium and now the next time you can do another covered call because there's th roughly 30 days out on your next covered call option you're going to be able to collect a much higher premium now the second thing that may happen is that the price goes up but not all the way up to the strike price so here are in our example our unit price is at 218.50 now second day it, again it goes up it hits 225 but on that date of expiration it doesn't quite close at 225 it closes at say 220 uh 224 or so and it doesn't quite hit that strike price of 225 so those options expire worthless but guess what we get to still keep our premium of ten dollars we get to keep our shares our hundred shares we can wait to average up because we bought these shares down at 218.50 or 220 220 an example but they're now worth 223 224 so we can either wait before averaging into these company you know into this fund or this company once again or we can average up and then once again going into the next month we can continue to resell our covered calls once again you know now that is priced at 223 we'll have some options here again at 225 or 230 225 may be a bit too close you know that's less than one percent difference there so in this case we may write our covered calls for the following month say at 230 or if you're really wanting to risk it maybe the market has been a bit rough you may write it for 225 but in most cases we're trying to sell the covered calls in order to get premium keep the premium and try and keep our shares but it's not going to be something that that's bad if you do sell your covered calls. So in this case here, option number three, our price actually goes over the strike price. So here, the second day, it's at 218.50. Third day, it is at 225. On the entry day between the third and the fourth day, it does come down just a bit. But before close, something happens towards the end of the day. It shoots up 225 all the way up to closing at 229. Now, in this case, your price, the share price at 229, is now over the strike price. So here, what's going to happen is you're still going to be able to keep your premium of $10 you're going to be able to buy another 100 shares because because you did get forced to sell your option was assigned your 100 shares of that company were assigned out at 225 so in this case 225 is where we sold 100 shares our cost basis here in this example i used 218 dollars and 50 cents that's a six dollar and 50 cent difference there uh, that's by 100 so our profit for capital appreciation is roughly $650 plus we made that $10 in premium so our total profit there is roughly $660 but remember our cost basis here was 220 21 so because we rolled up to 225 and it went over the maximum amount of profit that we actually collected was 489 based off this is based off my own investment of 22021. If it had closed over 225, which it did not back in June when I wrote this, I was able to clip that $10 and then I was able to write another covered call. So if it had expired over 225, my maximum profit would have been 489 there. But in this case, uh, you're, you automatically sell your position. You keep the capital appreciation up to 225 you keep that premium now what you did miss out on was the difference between 225 and 229 so here we missed out 
from 229 to 225 that's $4 times 100 that is a, a potential loss of $400 of profit but this could also fall back so just because you missed out you know you had to sell at 225 it closed at 229 doesn't mean that as of the end of this date that that stock price isn't going to come back down VTI in this example could come back down to 220 can come back down to 215 you know you could always rebuy this below 225 just because you took profits at 225 doesn't mean anything you still collected roughly 400 to 650 dollars of profit and you had your premium so there's nothing wrong with writing covered calls over the strike price especially when you're collecting capital appreciation you're collecting the premium so generally this works out really well when you're writing covered calls so i think we kind of hit all the nails on the head with all my friends that i've been talking to about covered calls none of us ever write covered calls below our cost basis because we don't want to run the risk of having to sell our companies or our, our funds below our initial cost basis so in most cases you want to write covered calls out quite a bit from your risk you know you want to have at least uh, the least amount of risk possible so the next time in this case here if this is trading at 229 and we're going into um what is it july now back when this was done if it closed at 229 and now we're looking at july options i don't want to write a covered call at 230 that's a dollar off that's probably less than a percent there i would want to look at covered calls for 235 or you know even 240 it just depends on that premium you know 240 would be really nice low risk i'd still collect some sort of a premium it probably wouldn't move up that 11 dollars within the month i think that would be nearly like a three or four percent difference there in a single month so you'd be pretty comfortable writing that option uh, so that is covered calls in a nutshell here on the merrill wedge platform let me know down in the comment section below if there is anything that i may have missed but i try to hit you know the the whole basis from you know going into the platform going into the research tab looking at your different your calls uh, we can also go over a video with puts puts aren't anything bad i like to write puts they're sort of like um uh, limit buys but in this case you're writing a put below your cost basis if it does fall down to that level you are forced to buy it but because it is below your cost basis it's actually working out for you because it lowers your cost basis overall you buy up another shares at that limit price essentially so we can do another video on covered puts if that's something you guys would like let me know down in the comment section below but otherwise that is essentially it i think covered calls have been doing really well there's really no way of not making profit when you're writing covered calls out of the money above your cost basis here in the short term we have a lot of volatility so in august i still believe here currently my shares for august 20th are above the strike price so i have covered calls at 225 i believe vti right now is trading at 227 but i still have roughly 15 days until my options either expire or get assigned if for whatever reason the share price does continue to climb or stay above 226 or so above my strike price i can always go back in here and i have the option to buy to close i will have to pay to close my option but i'll be able to collect my shares and then i'll probably resell some options once again i'll write some covered calls but this time go for 230 that way i would still collect some sort of a premium i think there's less likely chance that within the month of august that the share price would have moved from 223 to 24 up to 230 that would be a pretty big difference there but uh, that is pretty much it for this video again let me know down in the comment section if there is anything i may have missed hopefully it wasn't too confusing i've watched a couple of videos out there on covered calls for merrill edge and you know try to make one a little bit easier to hopefully understand and walk through so that is it for this video let me know down in the comment section below if you guys have any comments or questions again if you are brand new to the channel have not yet subscribed go down below hit the red button to subscribe make it great hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video and of course go check out my blog let me know if there's any comments or suggestions on that articles that you would like to see or content you'd like to see written up 
And that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.